What's good, everybody? It's producer P here, and we got a good episode for y'all. We got Super Jet and myself talking about bullshit. Here it goes. So Ooh, yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. But like I was saying, I he's let your God is correct in his assumption that, or not in his assumption, but the idea that Twitch would would promote you despite like, and you using that language. You know what and I mean? It might not be. F- it's not fair, but you. I mean, you got to think, right? YouTube has done it, right? You need to be brand friendly. You need to be this. Mm-hmm. You need to be that. You need to be like true, true. The first thirty seconds of your video, or like however long that is, you need to be as you know brand safe as possible. I agree. I agree. So when that is the case, it's not fair, right? Like you should be able to express any way you want, and they are allowed to, like. Kai and these other guys are definitely afforded that right. But at the same time, it's it's a hard thing to promote from a business standpoint. You get me? Mm-hmm. I don't know if you have any anything different or you would give me some pushback, but at the same time, I can't really I can't really be mad at them for being like, oh, this is not fair. But also at the same time, I see it from the business perspective, like, yeah, that makes a whole lot of sense. Like that doesn't, I mean, granted, you know what I mean? I, I guess maybe the way low tier God phrased it, people were like, oh no, that's not, that's not it. Or, or he didn't feel like Kai didn't feel like that was it. Mm-hmm. But I mean, he was right. I, I mean, I, I think he's 100% correct. I think so as well. It, it even said, well, I don't agree with it. But 100%. I mean, I agree. I agree with him. I don't agree with the with what's happening, but I agree with his statement of of like why that is presented that way. Um, in this article, uh, it even says that uh, previously Twitch has made uh, taken a stance on using the N word, you know, on Twitter. Um, and this was back in December of 2020, uh, and Twitch tweeted. Uh, we've had questions regarding using the N-word on Twitch. Uh, when it's used with the hard R, it's automatically not allowed, period. We are we automatically, we also automatically block the word across Twitch, including in, in chat. So that's very interesting. Additionally, regardless of spelling or pronunciation, slurs used for the purpose of hate or harassment are not allowed. So, I mean, specifically used uh, for hate, not allowed. But yes. I mean, if if you are a nigga, you can say nigga, basically. Like, but they're not taking that, you know, stance publicly. So really, this is this is open to interpretation. Like, if you're a white guy and you're just you know singing a song and you say nigga on stream, you know, it's just like, oh, you're still good in Twitch's eyes, though. You're still good. You're still good. Like, did they ban Ninja? Everybody else that? may you not know. fuck with you, but yeah, I guess you probably yeah, don't yeah. know. Did they ban Ninja for when that? You remember when we were doing that video? No, no, and he no, was singing the him. song. They didn't ban him. No, no, they didn't ban him. That's pretty funny. Yeah, he's on Nate Shot stream. <laughs> yeah, people just clipped the shit out of him. though. that shit was funny. <laughs> yeah, that it, that was pretty funny. I won't even lie. Uh, the double the double pump's not being removed. I'm like, what? The double pump is a nigger move. Like, <laughs> no, 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 the other one where he was like rapping along. Oh yeah, yeah, no, 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 he was not banned for that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That we one was a funny ass video. clip though. Yeah, that was funny as hell. Yeah. <laughs> but I I agree I agree with both of them because it's difficult to see Kai become more and more popular and clearly he's a reason that Twitch is bringing is having way more people go to the platform because even in the in the playback video from earlier this week uh it's fully known that that Twitch early on like from just in TV all the way up until maybe like three or four years ago, it's been like a dude bro kind of space. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, the like, gamer like, aesthetic. Yeah, the game, the true, you know, neck beard gamer aesthetic, you know, like you weren't really going to see a whole lot of people of color on the platform, let alone like thriving on the platform or using the platform really. So to see like more people go to Twitch specifically for Kai who have never used Twitch before. It's like, okay, cool. It's a little, it it sucks because you're not brand safe for Twitch to be able to acknowledge you. But also at the same time, they 
there's different ways that you can be acknowledged. You know what I mean? Like they could be like, yeah, one of our up and coming creators, they don't have to put you on the front page. Sure. But like, there's other forms of acknowledgement. So I agree with low tier God, but I don't agree with Twitch's methods of doing it. I don't know. It's, it's so weird because I also take it from my point of view. Like what am I, a, would I constitute as a featured creator? I'm boring as shit. Like, I don't think I would be on the front page, but then again, I've seen some people that are on the front page of Twitch who have been promoted by Twitch that are actually boring as fuck. So, well, it's, I don't, I don't think it's about being boring, right? Cause boring also could equal uh, for the most part brand safe. Right. I think yeah, that's the, true. that's the thing, right? I, I think the argument here that loads your God is presented is, Hey man, you're, you're doing a whole lot of shit. And yeah, while that is very entertaining, like the way these systems work are in place so you can the people who are the safest usually generate the most money granted you know kai sanat kai is the second most streamer but you know what i mean it's harder to say these things with like advertisers and things like that like the general general advertisers for the platform All right you know what i mean mm -hmm. so I get it. it. It's understandable, but I don't. Like I said, it's it's always going to be a muddy water with these platforms because they want to make the most money. They want to do what's in the best interest for them. Right. Right. It's and, understandable, but I don't agree with it. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, but is that how does that apply to cases like Jideon? Can we apply the same thing? I mean. I feel like uh, there's just well, somebody at Twitch. Twitch. I feel like there's just somebody at right. there's a couple of people probably at Twitch staff who just genuinely don't like him being on the platform. Um that's just my opinion. That's just my opinion from from the research context. that has been yeah. done. Yeah, from the context, from the not only not only the context, but the content and uh other people's uh research into the into the situation. So I just I don't know. Uh I think there's definitely somebody that does not want Gideon on the platform for sure, which I mean, they, you know, they have a right to, well, they're a private, him on well, the these platform. privately yeah. owned companies love doing that. Yeah. So. I mean, they could flex that all they want to, but I mean, it's, it's also like low tier God said in his video, like Gideon's getting millions of views per video. And then he has a whole second channel where that's like, he's getting sponsored on there multiple times. Like he does not need the Twitch bag, but I mean, when you look at it like that, like LTG's still right, but I mean, that's kind of a petty way to, not a petty way, but that's kind of a cynical way to look at it, where it's just like, yeah, you're like, oh, must be nice. You're getting a bag for, for just existing. And it's like, all right. You know, if I was an LTG hater, I'd be like, oh, you're somebody salty because he's not getting, because you got banned off of Twitch or because you know, no, you're know uh, you not making this kind of money or whatever. LTG is like actually that. not... Banned yeah, no, no, no. Twitch he's anymore. not banned on Twitch. No, oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm just using that as an example. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a LTG supporter, man. Even when he was toxic. Fair. I mean, I, I, I don't, I wouldn't call myself a supporter, but I, I definitely indulge. I wouldn't in the call content. myself a fan. Yeah, I wouldn't call myself a fan either. Um, you could, I kind of just tap in occasionally. And I'm like, ah, I'm here for a laugh because this is obviously a character he's portraying. Right. For sure, for sure. I have uh, very much enjoyed a lot of the changes that he's made. I don't think he's made any changes as a person. I think he's just made changes as, as his content has evolved. Yeah. Um, so people are like, oh, LTG's a pretty cool guy. Oh, like, no, uh, I, I personally don't think anything about him has changed. He probably just had, like, a, like I was saying before, he probably just had a moment where he was like, all right, I got to make my content a little bit more, like, consumable for people. Just the same way that he can sit here and say that Kai is not brand presentable. You know what I mean? So he speaks from experience. So it's, it's very interesting. And I feel like for a case for Jideon, for him to have like this negative connotation of just like, oh, well, Jideon shouldn't be complaining because he's got he's got a bag. But Jideon even says in his video, it's like, it's not just about me. It's like, it's bigger than that. Because if there's a... Uh, double standard going on at least hey s s twitch say that say that there's a double standard communicate that to the people on the platform because you're essentially banning people for things that that are unknown rules 
Like, it's okay for a girl to be able to do this, that, and the other thing on stream, but a second a guy does it, it's just like, whoa, 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 get this motherfucker off the platform. You know what I mean? So I think it's, I think the conversation that's being had is much bigger than Gideon, but also at the same time, which doesn't negate from the original point in the first place, is Gideon continues to present himself in this like, oh yeah, you know, I don't care if I'm banned, but then continues to continuously talk about it. Yeah, it continues yeah. to harp on it. But then that kind of goes back to the fact of, okay, if you get in trouble for doing something wrong, do you think you should be a crusader for every single time that rule is applied? Mm. I mean, it, it kind of makes sense. Like, like if Gideon got banned for a hate raid, right? Okay, yes. cool. Perma ban, you're off the platform or whatever. Let's say, uh, I don't know, fucking, what's his name? Uh, da, 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 da. Ludwig. Let's say Ludwig does it, right? Just because okay. he's trying to troll somebody. I mean, Ludwig probably would never do this. But let's just say when Ludwig, Ludwig was on Twitch, let's say he wants to send his, you know, couple thousand people over to another streamer and just L plus ratio them. Yes. Would he receive the same penalty that Gideon would receive? So that's, I, I think that's the point that Gideon's trying to get, but he's doing a terrible, like, I wouldn't say he's doing a terrible job, but if you have to, as a person consuming this content and this information, if I was not familiar with the platform, the rules or anything else like that, is that the information that Gideon successfully conveying? I don't think he is. Hmm. If I was somebody who was not in the know, not in the Twitch space, I didn't even know who Gideon was, and I suddenly saw this, I I would either form one of two opinions. This guy's clearly a moron, and he's really just crybaby whining just to whine, and he's a fucking millionaire. He's making all this fucking money on other platforms, kind of like an LTG saying. Or this is a legitimate problem that, like, oh, I didn't have any clue of this whatsoever, but I don't think they would apply the same rules to anybody. You know what I mean? Like there's hmm. really only a couple of approaches to see this if you're not already in the know. So him stating all of these things and trying to prove a point, he's not doing a very good job of conveying that information. That's it. So yeah. I think he could do a much better way of doing it. Um, how he would do that. I would say lead with examples instead of trying to make yourself as an example. Cause then that just gives people like you try to revert that or you try to like, basically like dumb that down or make it not as impactful by saying oh i don't even care if i'm still banned or not then shut the fuck up about that part like yeah just literally all you have to do is just don't mention that part and just say oh this person was banned for this reason this person is banned if anything his his tagline should be twitch is unfair true so and twitch still has to respond to his claims so yeah which is crazy um, nah, they won't. Well, actually not that crazy yeah yeah nah, it's they, not crazy. they definitely won't yeah it's it's not at all gonna happen um now here's another thing third scenario let's say pokimane or amaranth or one of the other golden girls of twitch i don't fucking know any besides those two um maybe indy fox is indy fox she's, been, she's been banned for a long time she's been banned for a long time okay for sure for sure for sure uh shout out to her though um for what reason i don't know let's say pokey did it right pokey does a hate raid you think she's getting in any trouble whatsoever um especially if she goes it was just for a hee hee ha ha troll like say she she says you know yes i think Twitter. she would get banned but the severity would not be the same as Gideon. she would get banned mm. that's just i'm that's what i'm a, of the opinion of i think i think she would get a three to seven day <sighs> i think she would get a three to seven day i think it, it like the thing is, is the reason why Gideon got banned so hard is that it was it was also a mix of off-platform actions as well. True, true. So, yeah. And that's why I said, like, if she tweeted, you know, like, LOL, like, ratio or something like that, it was just for it was just for funnies or something like that after her stream, like, would she still have... I think at that point, Twitch, once again, because this was also uh, brought up in the playback video that Agent was talking about that he learned as a Twitch content creator is that your intention matters to Twitch staff. Like when it comes to bans and appeals. So if her intention was to do a hee hee ha ha funny, and then she publicly says it was supposed to be a hee hee ha ha funny, would she still get in trouble? That's why I say I think she would get a three to seven day ban. 
Because yeah. if she makes the intention known that it was it was just supposed to be a jokey joke. Not only that, even in this video, the playback video, and Philip DeFranco's video, as well it, when he was you know bringing up the Corey Kenshin stuff, is that if intention does actually matter, Gideon didn't even know that was a rule that you couldn't do. Like he he was still new to Twitch, so as a first offense, really. And as a, oh, well, you didn't know, there was no way to know that unless you read the entire TOS. So really, and if anything, the intention was to clearly be a hee hee ha ha funny. So, you know, it's okay. like with that context, it's like, huh? Uh, well, I agree that the severity of his ban was very unfair. The only pushback I'm going to give you on this is that the lengths that he went to post ban were obviously wrong right 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 yeah so that also has to be factored in because on twitch you can be banned from from a multitude of things off platform they've said this multiple times right mm -hmm. so the things about on instagram the twitter stuff this all gets factored in so yeah he uh he chopped it up with pokimane and figured it out you know what i mean and i understand that but at the same time, let's not let's not forget you did do some sh some like off brand shit, some crazy shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Should you be on band one hundred percent? But let's not act like in that moment, in you know what I mean. In that moment, you didn't go crazy because you did. Right. Yeah. That's sure. the only pushback I would give. Uh, but I understand him wanting to uh, obviously get on band or whatever. Right. To me, uh, at this point. Like, as the dust is currently settling from last week's bullshit, I think at the end of the day, all being said and done, he should be at least unbanned. At, at, at least he should be unbanned at this point. Uh, because, I agree. And call it, time, call it time served. You know what I mean? Like, turn the permaban to, oh, okay, it was 30 days. Or maybe just reinstate it and be like, okay, Jideon, we'll let you back on the platform 30 days from now. You know what I mean? But, Will, my question is, in, in our hypothetical scenario where Gideon is unbanned right now, right? And they tell him, you're unbanned as of right now. Would he still consider, continue this crusade against Twitch whenever they fuck up? Um, Probably not. I, I want to believe that he would because uh, this is supposed to, quote unquote, be bigger than just his ban. It's not supposed to be just about his ban. It's supposed to be about Twitch as a platform not responding to things and not being responsible and 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 holding their their rule their TOS to everybody equally. So I don't know, man. I I feel like he would unfortunately he would just give it up. So every time Twitch does something wrong, if it's not done to him personally, he's not really going to stand up for it. I think he would if he's aware of the situation. I genuinely believe he's a he's a cool dude like that. But would he? Uh, I don't know. I don't I'm, know. I'm honestly not sure, to be honest. Yeah, I, I couldn't say. Uh, but from, that's from not his a content, universe he we seems live like in. a. Yeah, from his content, he seems like a genuinely like a good person. Like if somebody was like you know, if like a girl was getting beat up by her boyfriend in the liquor store or something like that, he'd be like, "Hey, man!" Like he would at least say something. You know, I don't I'd, know. If I'd, I'd hope in. so. That's a little. That's quite different, but. Hey, you know what? There's a lot of people that would be like, "Ooh." I'm going I'm to go the other way. I'm going to mind my own business. You know what I mean? Like, there's a I lot of you. people that would do that. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, but I I think ultimately he should be unbanned. Let that man come back. Uh, he's probably making more money on YouTube anyway, just uh, yeah. like based off of monetization and how that works and everything. Plus, he's probably able to cut content faster, too. So, oh, I don't yeah. know, man. I don't know. So. And the the no exclusivity that could be posted pretty much after stream. So I mean, yeah, granted, they you, lifted that on Twitch. Yeah, YouTube don't give a fuck. They're like, oh, you want to make money on other platforms? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Go crazy. You can even you can even stream to Facebook. I, I think Facebook is also another platform that doesn't have uh, exclusivity to it. So if he wanted to, he could get a Facebook bag. Um, maybe, but I I don't. I'm not sure with their partnered streamers that they like that. Because then you'd see a lot of these guys, like, multi, not multi-streaming, but they'd be doing a lot more on the YouTube side. I, I, a lot of these guys I've seen go to Facebook. They did hit the, some of them definitely hit it, 
but mm -hmm. I don't know the some of these guys were not really like tapped in like that. I would say because mm -hmm. I've seen I a lot of streamers go to Facebook, unfortunately, or not mm -hmm. unfortunately, but you know what I mean. A lot of streamers go there. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, sure, why not? Uh, I haven't. The only person I've seen that even has publicly said anything about their transition over to Facebook was Corinna Comp. And she said that's because Facebook offered her a ridiculous six figure deal, like just for her first month streaming. So, damn. Yeah. And we're like, at this point, she's making seven figures just off of Facebook streaming. So, nice. You know, congratulations. I, uh, yeah, congratulations to her. I mean, you know, she's making money several different ways. I mean, she makes millions off her OnlyFans and she makes millions off of Facebook streaming. Shit. W. All right. Yeah, buy me a Bugatti, baby. Sure. Good luck with that. Yeah, why don't I gotta, I gotta meet some more successful women, man. Oh yeah, you think you're you're yeah. a successful man? No, oh. absolutely not. Okay. No, definitely not. No, I need I need a woman to take care of me. Oh okay. The fuck? That'd be real nice. I I bet. Yeah. Oh, I did actually have a something i wanted to talk to you about that's that's off topic and then we'll we'll jump back on topic okay was uh you know i was at starbucks today since my apart apartment was getting fumigate fumigated jesus yes. Christ. um and i ended up picking up my goofy movie board game and my new mouse right because i didn't want to like leave it outside my apartment while my you know place was getting uh fumigated yep and i had to be away from home for four hours so i you know, picked up my package and I went to Starbucks and I ordered a drink and I kind of sat there and I was doing work and stuff like that. And this girl comes over and she goes, Oh my God, I love the goofy movie. Um, I was like, Oh, okay, that's cool. And I had no intention of inter interacting with this girl at all. She was like this little Asian girl. She had to have been like 24, maybe 25. Okay. And she seemed kind of cool, but like I was, I was working. I was like in the zone. Like I was trying to get like these Excel spreadsheets and my timesheet in, you know what I mean? Like, I gotta prove that I'm actually fucking working, right? Yeah. I, I really like, and to be honest with you, I really only work one to two days out of the week. And but when I am working, I like jam a whole week's worth of shit like in that two days, and so that way I could just like be chilling for two days, uh, for the rest of the week. Yeah. So she was like, she asked me some dumbass question. She asked me, "Oh, do you just hang out in coffee shops and try to get girls to talk to you, uh, with Disney board games?" And I was like. Nah, that's actually weird. And she goes, yeah, right? I was like, yeah, like coming up to somebody you don't know and accusing them of something and trying to spark up a conversation. Damn. And she just goes, oh, okay. Damn. And like, I was, on the, I was on the phone. I was on the phone with the anime girl and she heard that. She was like, what the fuck? <laughs> she goes, was that girl trying to hit on you? I was like, I don't know. Whatever oh, she's that was doing, a little she cold. Needs. I mean, I had no intention of talking to this girl. Like, first of all, don't accuse me of tr trying to use Disney bait. Let's call it that. Like, don't accuse me of trying to, like, talk to you and, like, any of this. And I didn't even approach you, bitch. I'm sitting here working. Like, I can't tell if you were trying to flirt with me or, like, what it was. But, yo, you low-key insulted me. Like, when you hit me in the, in, the, in, the, in the chest with, like, a Disney accusation, I'd be like, hey, yo, who the fuck That's the you one think that got you, you are? Yeah, that was the one that set me off, bro. Because that was yeah. a little cold. I'm not going to lie. I mean, even for you. You know, <laughs> I had, you know what? I'm a different person now, man. No fap got me acting different. I bet. Because that yeah. you would have never said that earlier. <laughs> never would have said that. Hey man, sometimes you just gotta you Goofy just gotta movie say no. got you fucked up. Yeah, you just gotta say no to your bodily urges, you know what I'm saying? And like any well, I guess you were trying to you trying to impress anime girl? Sorry. No, absolutely not. Never. <laughs> I don't I don't need to impress her. Me breathing no, is impressive to her. Like what the fuck? Come on, bro. True. Nah, I, but like in all seriousness, like jokes aside, I'm really just like I think for the next couple of months, I'm really just trying to trying to just be by myself and just like be like you know what I mean, like be a That's standalone cool. island type beat. Yeah yeah, 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 I get that. I understand that. Yeah, because I mean, all of this like self work that I've been putting in, bro. I feel good about who I am going forward, like my principles, my values, and stuff like that. Uh, this week, I actually didn't even think about GTA that much. Uh, Lucky you. You know, for, yeah, nah, man, that's not luck. This shit has been difficult because I found, man, last week I was, I was dusting my apartment. I was cleaning up and I found one of like, you know, she had like relatively like long hair 
and it was like curly and, and like bright brown. And so like I found one of these hairs, bro, and I I almost broke down crying. Oh, okay. Like, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. This was like two weeks ago, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was oh my god, bro. Because it's like and there's this one t shirt that I have in the back of my closet, uh that she wore the last time she was over here, and it has like her perfume on it. And like I'm not gonna lie, bro. I just be looking at that shirt and I can like smell it. But then I'm just like, all right, let me, I, I just close the closet basically. Like I just walk away. I'd be like, whatever's back there. Like, I don't care. Like I, I, if I don't wear that shirt, I don't need to look at that shirt. You know what I mean? Like, it's just going to stay back there. Like out of sight, out of mind type B, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I think the healing process has been very good for me. And then I've been going to my support group meetings and stuff like that. And that's been pretty helpful. Um, I, I'm at the point now where I've done the maximum amount of stuff that I can do myself uh, with like therapy and everything. Uh, and to go forward, I actually need two things. I need a coach uh, specifically for like getting my life in order and getting my career in order and stuff like that. Um, specifically with like all this marketing shit, because uh, I have no idea how to traverse that. And I also need a sponsor uh, from for my uh, group support and stuff like that. So I got to find a sponsor. Mm. Um, but you know, my recovery has been pretty cool, man. You know, I uh, there's still some moments that kind of trigger me and hit me really hard. Like when I look at bottles of uh, Casamigos or Don Julio, I be having flashbacks, bro. I, nah, I'm, I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious, bro. It's, it's, I know it sounds wild, but it's like it's a trigger. You know what I mean? Like especially specific you. bottles. You know, like because me and GTA, you you know we we tequila drinkers, my boy. You know, so when we see when I see like a this big ass bottle of Don Julio. And it just it just reminds me of her, you know what I mean? And then I'm just like, damn, I'm like. Anyway, like <laughs> Yeah, I got you. you know, I got you fucked up. Having, yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be having me real fucked up. There's been a couple of days where like I've had to like I was out at dinner with like a friend with some friends or something like that. And I'll be like, I gotta go to the bathroom, bro. And I just like go and I I, I need to take like a big ass deep breath for like a couple of minutes. Like and it's funny because like I'll be in the bathroom just kind of like just like breathing and shit and just trying to like get that shit off my mind. And then when I come back out and I come to the dinner table, my friends are like mocking me. They're like, Oh, did you go in there and take a shit? I'm like, all right, bro. I, don't know. <laughs> I know you think that shit is funny, but like, to me, it's just kind of annoying. You know what I mean? Cause I know the personal journey that I'm on, but the, these niggas think it's fucking funny, you know? So yeah. It's like, you know? And of course, anime girls, she's just like, I, you know, she doing whatever. Like, nah, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with her. Anyway, uh, strange individuals do strange, strange things, right? So true. But yeah, man, the recovery is going well. You know, I'm extra ecstatic about it. We getting some content done. We're a little behind this week just because I've had uh, some work stuff to do and been playing too much GTA. So, mm. yeah, I like to hear. Man. I like improvement, man. Oh man, you know, I'm doing the best I can. I think. Uh, or I'm doing what I can for the most part. So 100%. Yeah. I'm glad yeah, you had a well, good What week. about you, my boy? What's going on with you? Oh, man. You know, it's the same day, different shit. Hmm. Is it still, uh, still the same color? Yes. Always. S still curving around the bowl? Yes. Oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> I love that. I love that, man. That's good. That's healthy. I think. Right? Yeah, I maybe, perhaps. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit, for sure. Yeah, well, I'm just doing my thing. Yeah, for sure. That's always what sure. I've been doing. You want to transition us to this Jitty, to this uh, Corey Kenshin thing, or? Uh, I'm more interested in about Superjet. Oh, like, Superjet ain't doing, here. What's brother? up, Super? <laughs> uh, my, my apologies. I just, y'all, in deep in this conversation, I'm like, oh, I don't want to disturb. No, you're good. No, you're good. Uh, you know what's we up, love OG you here Super over Jet? at Cannon Culture. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that, I was wondering, like, oh shoot, I joined at the wrong time, you know? Nah, <laughs> no, this nah, is the perfect nah. time. Honestly, okay. I mean, that's that, that's specifically like if you really had to think about it. In order to even get into this chat, you had to have, uh, you know, had the role for it. So clearly, you've been blessed with the role. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I allowed uh, you into the domicile, my man. So you know. <laughs> All right, nah. okay, you just got too deep. I'm like, all right, now nah, you can't disturb, don't say anything dumb, you know, be quiet. <laughs> nah, it's cool, it's cool. It's usually when somebody that's, I mean, except for Deacon, Deacon's a, an example. And a, and a, what, am I, what am I trying to say? Damn. He's an exemption, he's an exemption. Like, 
you know, if you're a content creator and, and you know, I gave you the podcast role, obviously you can come up in here and you can say whatever the fuck you want. Like, Fair. regardless if it's, if it's being recorded or not, but just remember by stepping in here, you are, you know, it is a possibility that anything you say or do can be recorded. Yep. That's perfectly so. fine. Why am I supposed to be afraid of something? Like, <laughs> yeah, you have forfeited your right to not be a part of content, unfortunately. Yeah, basically, yeah, rather you want to or not. Exactly. Right. Yeah, Welcome to the content. Yeah. What's going on with you, brother? Super, how are you, man? Uh, now I'm just vibing, I guess. Uh, still dealing with the stuff over here for the last year, or so. No, oh, okay. I mean, oh, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. How are you holding up, by the way, man? You, you. You went through a lot. I don't want to put your business out there unless unless let's go. No, yeah, you went through a lot of shit real fast in a very short amount of time, man. Oh, yeah, I started in October, then my car gets repo. Oh, not repo. My someone hits the freaking car. I lose a car. Uh, all my pipes break in the house. I got no no hot water. I'm like, ah, shit. Mm-hmm. Then you know, trying to figure out how to deal with school and work. I'm like, oh, god, this is the worst day. <laughs> this could yeah. be the worst day imaginable. <laughs> that's that's what happened to me earlier in the year like my fucking whole my whole house just fell apart like literally uh, for you yeah almost literally really damn yeah get them fucking windows fixed man the the windows you know what's funny i've asked about the windows so many times (laughs) the windows are not fixed the windows are definitely i'm definitely not gonna have any temperature control the windows are walls now bro let's be real (laughs) bro there's like there's a lot of annoying shit that comes with that too so there's like ran like there was this one time there was this random cat that just walked that just came in the crib and it was un- it was like laying underneath the stairs and i and there was it had to go through a bunch of old like uh old boxes and shit to get there this motherfucker was sitting underneath the stairs with all the boxes piled up and that th- i would hear that motherfucker at night like just meowing and shit because he couldn't get out the dumb little fuck. Yeah. Wow. Oh my god. It was the hey, worst. Man. Drop the drop the cash app so people can help, man. What's the cash no, app? No, no, no. I don't I don't have any cash app. <laughs> Just support okay. the Patreon, please. Support Patreon. the Patreon, yeah. Slash right. culture. Please support. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nice plug. Nice plug. Gotcha. So that way Plank can go to Home Depot and get get his basement <laughs> boarded up properly. <laughs> nah, man, I, I jokes aside, I'd be real concerned because that that was a thought I had. I was like, what if an animal were to just like just walk up in there you know what i'm saying oh it it did that happened that definitely you happened know, yeah some dumbass cat gets stuck behind some boxes because you know i remember i was in the dis i was being discord it's my bad not to cut you off but i would be in discords i think i was in here like a few times and I was, there was like a, a a sound in the background and it was like a meowing or a, it was like a weird weird screech that i couldn't tell i thought it was a pipe the way it mm-hmm. sounded and it was far away i couldn't tell what it was and I'd be in here, and I just like somebody even heard it in the background of my mic one time, and I was like, "What the fuck is that sound?" I thought that was your cat. Nah, it was a different. <laughs> no, she don't be meowing like that though. She does, but you can't. It wasn't like that. It was. It, I think that just... was. There was one time where we were doing a podcast, and like you had your camera on, and like your cat popped in and was just sitting on your desk. I think Deacon had said something, and then your cat literally like, like leaned into the mic and just went meow. <laughs> Yeah, he does that. <laughs> that shit was funny, bro. I, I gotta <laughs> find that. I gotta find that episode, man. I wanna. That's an old that. one. Yeah, that's a real, real old one. So, shit. But, okay, you know. super. Let me get into another topic. Cause uh, we we went on about personal lives a little too long. How do you <laughs> feel about the review bomb? I guess the review bombing of Saints Row Five, as a person <laughs> who likes it. Oh gosh, I find it funny. I knew it was gonna happen. Ooh, months in advance. Uh, I feel like the review burn was t- was gonna happen just because how everyone reacted over trailers. Uh, but even when even now when people don't even say, "Oh, I'm not gonna even bother the game. This game looks like a want to me." I'm like, "Uh, that's cool, nah, But did you did you even play? I mean, you saw a couple of clips, you heard a couple of cringy lines, and you automatically gonna give it like a one? I don't know. Kind of a, kind a of a few, stretch, to be honest. There was a few big YouTube reviewers like Critical and and Mudahar from some ordinary gamers who really disliked the game. Oh yeah, I saw the reviews, and by all means, I I would say their arguments very valid. 
I'm not disagreeing from what they're saying. The problem with that is I don't find some of the things they complain about that big of a deal. Like, they're saying, like, oh, the gameplay is super outdated and the story is kind of Gen Z-ish. And even though there are some moments or gameplay factors that, that is true, uh, I don't think it's enough. It's not bad enough to say, oh, no, this is just, just terrible altogether. This is, like, one of the worst games I ever played. Man, the fucking Sonic 06 game is a lot better than this or something stupid like that. I don't know. I think it's kind of a, I think some of it, even though it's valid, they're stretching it way too deep. I see. Mm-hmm. So if there's one thing that you could like push back on and like kind of uh, show why the game was better than they they thought, what would what would be something that you would say is good? It's about mostly because I would say that everything they said was mostly with the story, like saying it's very cringy. I, I personally say that it doesn't. Uh, new Gen Z cringy lines, it doesn't show up as much, and that's what that's basically like the argument I'll say for them. I'm not gonna deny it's there, it's definitely there, but saying like every line or the majority of story, it's like yo, fight the fight the companies and blah blah blah. I don't see it popping up en- enough. Mm, okay. Okay. I mean, I didn't. I don't think me and Jay didn't play the game, so it, no, you can only not. speak from from your stuff. I, can't, I don't. My thing is, I can't justify sixty paying sixty for that. Plus, it's like as you it's stated, and even in your review, that it was kind of like buggy, and there was oh, wait for the Steam buggy. version. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, wait for the Steam version release. Mostly, I hate Epic in general, but it's the fact that you know I think Steam won't screw you over with the save data I lost and whatever. Plus. I think, like, in a year, I think all the bugs will be fixed. Mm. Kind of like the Borderlands 3 situation, right? Kind of, yeah, I could say that. Because Borderlands 3, it was a... a, I mean, even to an extent, it had the same problems, right? Mm -hmm. You could say that the the Gen Z story and uh, outdated gameplay and things like that, those are all... Uh, criticisms you can levy against Borderlands 3. Granted, that game, uh, you know what I mean, there was a lot of factors why that game didn't really catch as many people's attention. But those criticisms are, I mean, those are some of the criticisms I have for Borderlands 3. Mm -hmm. So, I I don't know. I, I didn't see the reviews on Borderlands either, but I'm assuming that they probably didn't be as combative to that game or they weren't as charitable uh or they were they were probably a little bit charitable to that game mm-hmm. is what i would say jay what did you think of playing uh from playing borderlands 3 well a couple of things borderlands 3 did not manage because funny enough before playing borderlands 3 we played through every Borderlands game. Borderlands 1, Borderlands 2. Uh, I even played pre-sequel all over again. I even played the Telltale games, uh, which obviously not the same format, but the one thing that I thought was really screwed up Borderlands 3 was the writing. I feel like there was a lot of stuff, and even after getting the director's cut and finding out the stuff that they cut out of the game would have given way more context, way more clues, made you actually care about more characters. And it just, it was very lackluster. Whereas Borderlands 2 was easily a 9 out of 10, if not a 10 out of 10 type of game from uh, gameplay, gunplay, story mode, characters you actually give a shit about. All four of those aspects, even a great villain. So all five of those aspects were just, hit or miss in borderlands 3 the villains yeah you wanted to give a shit you were like oh this is cool but then they turned it into this weird social media youtuber gen z type of thing where they developed their own slang and all of a sudden these these villains are supposed to be taken seriously some of the side villains in borderlands 3 are better than the calypso twins which are it is just baffling because the performance that the voice actors give for the Calypso twins make it seem like they're going to be such a big deal. The Calypso twins gave me 
uh, Far Cry 3 vibes, where basically you build up Vaz throughout this entire game, and you're like, yo, this is going to be such a great villain, and then you kill him off way too early, only to give us this half-ass bullshit villain. This felt like the same thing, but backwards. Like, you were building up a shitty villain, and then when you got to the end, you're like, huh, I don't know. I was excited for this, but now that I've gotten to the conclusion of it, it's like, ugh. What the fuck is this? So, in all honesty, Borderlands 3 was very lackluster uh, and took a 10 out of 10 game and managed to turn it into a 6 out of 10, if anything. And that's just based off of the story. Like, the characters that were killed off, obviously, in Borderlands 2 and the DLC and all of the other things that are canonically, you know, in line with the Borderlands story, really, they tried to replace a lot of those characters, but didn't do a very good job in the third game so um now to kind of like break away i did play the tiny tina expansion uh that was pretty good that was really fun playing bunkers and badasses although it was a little bit too much dungeons and dragons and not enough first person shooter borderlands stuff borderlands 3 was the first borderlands game i got bored of playing like Mm. i genuinely got bored there's way too many interjecting dialogue pieces which borderlands 2 kind of suffers from a little bit where they're trying to tell jokes while in the middle of action and killing a boss or something like that so sometimes you'll like miss the jokes borderlands 3 does it way too much way 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 too much even during points where like they're introducing a new villain that you're gonna beat in the next 20 minutes or something like that and they got claptrap trying to tell you a joke mid cutscene, and it's like wait i'm trying to i'm I'm trying to shoot something right now. Like, why are you trying to make an emphasis on this thing that's not funny? Like, the writing was a real miss for the game. Mm. Uh, The gunplay and the changes that they made there, some were really good because they took them from pre-sequel, like the gravity jumping, the slam, the sliding, things like that. Those are movement changes that were really good. But the game felt like it was sluggish. Like, as if they took the speed and they turned it down like 15, 20%. So you're not really traversing through these areas as quickly as you would in Borderlands 2. So it almost made like the slide, the jump, the slam, all of these new movement mechanics in the Borderlands games. It just ruined it. It just ruined the whole experience. So not only is the game slow in pacing, the story's incomplete, the characters are kind of lackluster. When you have a combination of those things in a game that you expect to have those things down because they had them down for the previous three games, eh. I don't want it. It was a game yeah. that's like not even worth $20 playing, to be honest with you. And that's like complete with all of the DLC, all of the bug fixes and the director's cut with the extended like character deaths and exposition and all that other stuff. Games are $25 on launch. Yeah, I agree. And one thing that um, I thought was interesting about both the games we were just discussing, Saints Row and Epic Games, I was talking to Superjet about this like earlier, is that a lot of the for some reason a lot of the games that go on epic just seem to like falter a lot than if they just had a steam release i don't know if that's because i mean obviously epic is a little smaller despite having fortnite but at the same time it's like these games they get on and they're off you know what i mean like that's it almost like they go to almost like they go to die there essentially Mm. Uh, there were a few examples of like games that definitely did really well, but for the most part, even even with Tony Hawk, right? Tony Hawk did really good, one of the biggest, uh, best sales in the franchise. It it didn't do. If it had a Steam release, it probably would have done ten times better. But it died. The game died also in a week. Mm, true. In my opinion. And I thought it was that was an interesting thing that, yeah, you get money from Epic to be exclusive to their platform, but you might might be losing out, out on a lot more than what you could have been getting. So mm-hmm. that's kind of the trade off there. It's very interesting. Do you feel like that's uh, games overall now that I think about it? Like it's more than just those two games, obviously. Yeah, obviously. Um. Uh, I mean, Genshin Impact got put on Epic, strangely, and it's not on Steam. Mm. I don't know why they do that. Destiny 2 just got recently released on Steam. Or not Steam, uh, excuse me. Epic Games. So, yeah, they gave away some free stuff, too. 
Yeah, they gave away free DLC. Mm. You could play the uh, the game's free DLC, all the game's DLC for free for about five days, and they gave you a free DLC. It was the 30th anniversary they gave you. Mm. Wow. I'm pretty, I mean, Destiny already had a pretty big community because it's a free-to-play game. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, getting on another platform is nice, but I don't think they're getting, like, crazy numbers. They just kind of want people to buy microtransactions, so. Mm. Thus is the blight of everything going on, so. But yeah, to to respond to your original point, because I kind of, back, uh, like, went left. Yeah, I think a lot of these games kind of go there to get their money in dip, to be honest. Mm. Maybe, I don't know if it's a confidence thing, like, not confident in the product, or... It's like a hey, we need to get our money, we need to get our guaranteed bag, type shit. And I don't, I don't have necessarily a problem with that. I don't know what your thoughts on that are, like guaranteed bag over potential uh, um, money from Steam or like really good money on Steam. It's very similar to uh, something Matt Damon was talking about in an interview. Uh, he was saying the reason why they don't make movies now, like how they make in the '90s or in the early 2000s, was because they had DVD sales. And so Matt Damon was saying, oh, when we used to make movies, sometimes there was, like, if you have a $100 million movie, right? Yep. You obviously have to put $50 million into marketing, $50 million into paying people, and then you also have money that you have to spend to put on the back end. So you essentially have to take a uh, a movie that you would have spent $100 million on and double that money if you really want it to, like, in order for you to break even, you'd have to make double the money, right? You'd have to make a, you have to make two hundred million dollars off that movie because you spent a hundred million dollars to make it, so and market it. So you you need to turn some kind of profit because you're a movie maker, and you also have to pay distribution. You have to pay the movie theaters in order to to make sure that you can continue to distribute your movie to those films. You got to pay the actors and things like that. So that shit adds up so really if anything you instead of making 200 million you have to make 250 million in order to mm. like really turn a profit not just break even but turn turn a profit during the time of dvd sales you had the option to do that because it was like getting a second release is what he said and because you could almost guarantee if 100 if you made 100 million dollars in the box office more than likely most of those people are going to buy a dvd so that's where you're going to get your additional 150 million so because platforms no longer do that, you have to, you can't make these random rom-com movies. You can't make these random like one-off movies that are about like, you know, the love story between uh, a guy and a girl in a different country and stuff like that. And he goes back home and realizes, oh, she was the love of my life. So I had to fly back out there and she's with another guy. So I have to win her over. Like they can't make movies like that no more. Just like they can't make games that aren't AAA titles anymore that aren't going to do really, really big deals uh, or they're going to be memed into obscurity or memed into success. You know, like mm. there's a lot of games that come out that really have almost no backing, no marketing, no reason why these games should do as good as they do. And then they explode. And it's also timing. It's also based off of what other games are out right now. It also is what that game has to offer. And is it fun? So if you're somebody that like, spends 20 30 million dollars to make elden ring and then you sell a hundred million dollars worth of you know copies you're like oh shit like people really fuck with this game and it's like your game also came out during a time where there are no good video games out like horizon zero dawn came out the same month as elden ring i didn't want to play horizon zero dawn i wanted to play something that was actually no i really i legitimately didn't i bought that game uh twice because I, I bought the PS4 version and tried to play it on my PS5, and it was dog shit. And because I bought it digital, like, I, they wouldn't give me my, my refund because I had played more than an hour of the game. So I was like, all right, whatever. So I bought the PS5 upgrade, which was 30 bucks at the time. Now it's free, which I didn't even know they were going to make that shit for free. So I spent $30 on the upgrade, and I played maybe four hours of that game, and I got bored. Like, it just wasn't, it wasn't a good time. I got Elden Ring as a sponsored GIF, and I, the first day I played tw- almost 20 hours within the first two days of, pl- of playing that game. Yeah. So it was just something different. Like it was, it was fun. It was thrilling. I didn't, I still don't care about the story too much. I care more about the story of certain characters. Like, uh, 
Mog, Mog, obviously, I care about Ronnie's story, at Melania. Like, there's certain individual characters I actually give a shit about. And then so, therefore, I'm going to seek their stories outside of that. But that game was not something that was marketed towards a huge amount of people. Not only that, the game being made in itself, it, the tagline to majority of the Souls games are, this game is not for everybody. But all of a sudden, because there was a lack of games, everybody was buying it, everybody was playing it, everybody was streaming it. So, timing. Stray is another thing. Stray is like, I think that was a $2.3 million game or something like that. It was fairly cheap. And the game has is blown up online. Yeah. I think it's gotten like I think they made ten million dollars off of that off of that game or something like a Damn. like the studio is a fairly small studio too. And funny enough, when the game came out, it was for free on PlayStation Plus. You just got it for free if you had the highest tier of well, I think it's like PlayStation Premium or something like that. Yeah. If you had that, Stray is free, so you automatically get to play it, no problem. And Sony was just like, oh, we'll give you the money for it. It's a game about a fucking cat traversing sewers in a post-apocalyptic cyberpunk, like, future. Like, what? And no, there's not a single word in the game. Nobody talks in the entire game. Like, it's literally just meowing and robots. Damn. <laughs> the game did amazing. It's a great fucking game. So, still, I'd play that game before I play Horizon Zero Dawn that has three, five, ten times the effort put into that game so yeah probably you know. a fuckload of budget too yeah 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 crazy budget so yeah man like you can't really afford to make games that aren't bangers so i understand why making uh new ips is difficult and if you can't guarantee your money back if not double then it's like yo why do we even why do we even do it why do we yeah. even make it so which is very interesting because to kind of circle back I'm surprised that Saints Row even got another game. Like, because after the last two, I was like, yo, they got to be done with this franchise. Like, they, they have to be done. Mm. since Because GTA has been holding it down since 2013. And to say, I mean, obviously, people are going to compare the two games, but they're completely different. But I mean, to align Saints Row with, like, would I play Saints Row over GTA? Probably not. Like... And that's without like the online mode or anything like that. Obviously, you know, we've had conversations about how much of the GTA five story I finished, but I mean, like, whatever, who cares? Uh, one is clearly more entertaining than the other. So I don't know, man. I don't know. And I super, I want your, uh, my bad. Uh, uh, super. Oh, I would like it. your opinion on like, maybe the, I don't, I don't want to say the downfall of Saints Row, but there's obviously been like a drop in, in quality, quality. Mm -hmm. well they haven't gone up that's for sure i don't know about <laughs> down but they haven't gone up okay uh well i know what happened and there's multiple arguments explaining what could have happened or what was the driving factor or like how the hell did we go from some serious fucking game to your celeb to aliens to demons to i don't know this fucking reboot I don't know what the argument is, but most people like to say they, they didn't want to be similar to GTA. That's why a lot of people want to bring up this argument. And I can see why. I mean, you can compare uh, the second game to San Andreas. has the same amount of maturity and stuff and has more serious storyline. But they mostly people like to say that the it got wacky and all this other shit because they wanted to be more unique. And they wanted to separate, like, oh, we're our own free roam game, and that's probably the downfall and the quality. And oh, I don't know. It just, it's, it's a lot of he said, she said, of what could have happened. But that's like the biggest factor. Like, yo, we lost the inspiration, we all this other shit to be different. Hmm. We want, yeah, that's what, that's why I always see it from. And that's not, I don't know. I don't think that's a good thing to be like, oh. We want to be super different from this other franchise. Like, let's be honest. You have to be, you have to be, you have to have a, a fucking awesome game to even put, go on top of GTA. So, I don't know. I, I don't think going unique was the right route. Mm. So. Mm. I'd probably agree yeah. with that. Because mm -hmm. even when they tried to go back to, like, the semi-serious kind of game, right? Like, with this newer one, it... 
uh, it didn't hit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Obviously, from the reviews to to the perception, uh, especially on Twitter and things like that, even though that's not <laughs> real. But the perception is still like, ah, this game is not good. Despite trying to go back to its roots, it seems like. Yeah, uh, uh, I don't. That's definitely their freaking fault. And they don't, they don't have to do something about the marketing too, because I I didn't even. Number one, I didn't even know there was the new Saints Row game was not only coming out but was already out. <laughs> I mean, and, um, they promoted yeah, it a little bit before the release with ads. The and promos stuff. I've seen, they're very lackluster promos. I don't know if they hired a different uh, studio or or post house to do the trailer. But the trailers do not hit for that game. Mm-hmm. So, in any regard, <laughs> no, it's not shocking. The marketing, yeah, yeah. don't get me wrong, the marketing was horrible. I, but the thing I, I personally saw like, whoa, this marketing was a lot better than their last fucking title. Mm-hmm. So, because the last title was Age of Mayhem, and by God, that was fucking, the marketing was damn near terrible. It was like, oh, we got, and we announced the game, and then we're going to release another trailer. Two weeks before the game drops. Hmm. And I'm like, uh, I don't think that's enough time to hype people up. So, <laughs> so yeah. yeah, the marketing has been really bad for a while. Hmm. Mm. We can only hope it'll get better, man. It what, are your, uh, what are your takes for the next Saints Row game or the next game that the studio makes? Oh, Any notes sh- that you would give them? Uh, uh, first of all, uh, I mean, thing I'll say is, they either have to fix up the storyline because everybody hates these fucking characters. Um, I want to say reboot because yeah, the last one went so well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I don't even know. I mean, there's a few things you can do like I'll reset the original timeline or I don't know, just do a new IP or damn, sell the freaking IP to another company. And that's what most people want. Just they're they're not going to because Volition's one of the smallest AAA studios out there. But I don't know if they can't if they've taken three L's in a row. There's a problem. There's mm. definitely a problem with the studio. Fair. I don't know. I my personal thing is I think they're gonna go after this last reception. We mean super. We're talking about this too. I was like, the most likely next step is like, hey, we need to do a two remake or we need to we need a quick cash grab. Even though we got our bag from Epic, we're still going to need to get in there. And you know what I mean? Show everybody that, you know what I mean? What we're doing is is correct. Whew. I but, mean, that's a smart error, but that's what everybody wants. At least a one remake because a lot of people haven't played that first one. Just for the fact that it was an Xbox exclusive. Oh, yeah. Uh, Old ass game, too. Yeah, so anything because this this is this they have to do something or that company can't go under. I mean, Deep Silver wasted so many money, so much money buying the company, and <laughs> they have not been a lot of there hasn't been a lot of success about it. And then they have to rely on Dead Island too to, to be happy. So I don't know. Hmm. Oh yeah, Deep Deep Silver does. Do, I forgot they did Dead Island. Dead Island because it was. It's been a long time, even though we just got a, a trailer. It's been a long time since I've played the games. You know what I, I think is strange? And then, sorry to cut you off. No, but you're I need, good. I need, to, I need to say this. This Dead Island game does not play, take place on an island. True. That's it. That's, that's all I have to say. <laughs> is that, like, is, is, that a, is that a big complaint of yours? Like, no, oh, no, 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 shit, just, this game's not on a up. fucking island. It's just an observation. It had nothing. You're out of time. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> no island. Okay. No all. No island boys on Dead Island. You think they'd show up? Oh uh, god. No. <laughs> That'd be an interesting cameo. That would be an interesting cameo. Uh, Maybe that would give I it some know. validity. <laughs> I don't know about that. Being able to kill the island boys, I feel like people would definitely buy the game just for that. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sure. Oh Thanks man, sure. speaking of cameos, man, did you see guys see that uh high on life game that was getting a lot of uh Oh the it was uh, getting a lot of Rick and Morty guys. Yeah, the Rick and Morty team w- made a game and they have Morty as a gun. And he like uh, there was one thing on Twitter that they were like, "Oh my god, Rick and Morty ruined comedy or something." 
and it was basically a scenario of Morty as a gun, and he's contemplating. Um, they're like your your character is supposed to shoot the kid or whatever, or that's what the character wanted to do. The person playing, mm-hmm. and they were like, "You're really gonna kill a kid?" And they did this like whole bit for like a couple of minutes, and then they eventually just shot the kid. And they were like, "Oh <laughs> yeah, that's, there goes our E rating and a bunch of other jokes." You'd have to watch it, but that fuck, a lot of people, a lot of people didn't fuck with that. Mm. Y'all got some opinions on that, like uh, Rick and Morty, and how that kind of a lot of people think that ruined comedy. Um, so, they're stretching. I don't think that's right, but it's definitely hyperbolic. But. I will quote a quote a comedian here. Hold on, I'm trying to remember. Uh, Jamie Fox actually said this on an interview last week. Uh, I forgot what show it was, but he was on a he was on a podcast. <laughs> And um, he said, the jokes that we can make back in the day, we can only make behind closed doors now. And I fucked with that because he was like, yeah, now that entertainers are no longer being able to only judge other entertainer entertainers is now because of social media and the Internet. Uh, the average person now has similar weight to the person that created the joke. So if you say a, a, an offensive joke and it's actually funny. And one person goes, I'm offended by that. And then other people are like, well, if you're offended, I'm offended that you're offended. And then another person will goes, well, you can't be offended because this person's offended. That offends me. And it's just like, then you just have this cycle where you now forget, like, why was the original thing? Could it be offensive anyway? And was it intended to be funny? So you not only lose the intention, but you lose the fact that it's just a fucking joke. Like if it hurts your feelings, Okay, it hurts your feelings. You'll get new ones. <laughs> like, True. It, it'll pass, buddy. It'll pass. Like, this is not something that's going to make you fucking self-delete. And if it is, you probably should have been seeking help before, you know what I mean? Like, there's there's several stages before getting to where we're at that this joke would be the reason that, you know, that's your, conv- that's your 13th reason, basically. Yeah. Like, you needed some help way, 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 way before you got here to this joke. And you were really just looking for an excuse. So I don't know, man. I don't know. I feel like the pendulum swings different ways. Sometimes we're way too offended by stuff. Sometimes, hey, that should have been offensive. Like it should have, but we're going to let it slide because it's funny. But I don't know, man. I, I, I think the more, right, just to pick on him, I think the more comedians and, and hardcore people like Dave Chappelle really push the line and push the issue of like, should we be offended by this if we know it's just a joke? Like, should we adhere to other people? Like, should people be able to lose their jobs just because you disagree with the things that they say? And I think because we're now allowing idiots to have megaphones, um, it's just, it kind of is what it is. And we need more idiots with megaphones to stop being idiots Hmm. while they have the megaphone in their hand. So what do you think about, like, people critiquing jokes, right? Like, a a lot of the criticisms... I saw were like, yeah, this joke is just not funny, right? And where do you draw that line, right, between, all right, I'm offended, and yeah, this joke is just fucking ass. Okay, you stated what you had to state. Shut the fuck up. We heard okay. you. Okay. I mean, honestly, because people are just going to be offended by anything. Like, you're going to be offended by something. Something somewhere is going to offend you, and it's like, who do you tell? Who are you going to tattletale to? You know what I mean? Like, go tell your fucking therapist. Seriously. Like, that's who you need to go tell. Go tell your little friends in your friend group or whatever. But, like, starting a crusade because somebody told a joke that other people thought were funny. Now, it's one thing if it's, like, a ton of people are just like, yo, this was not cool. Like, you know, you're you're making jokes about, like, killing kids and stuff like that. Okay. But was the joke funny? Which is subjective. Yeah. I think if you find something not funny, don't consume it. Just the same reason, like, when we sit here and we talk about Andrew Tate, like, if he wasn't entertaining and if he wasn't saying anything true, then don't pay attention to him. Don't give him gas, which he's actually said. Like, the, and I quote, the, the, mo- the best way for my haters and, my, and people who criticize me to hurt me is to never consume my content, never talk about me. That's the, that's the worst thing that they could do to me. Mm. And it's like, yeah, that's true. 
do not consume and do not talk about the content and things that you don't like. Because if you really felt offended by the things that Dave Chappelle or any of these other comedians say, why are you talking about them every single day? Like, why is that the subject of everything that, that you move, every conversation that you want to have, every, every single thing that you want to bring up, every single argument? It's like, oh, but Dave Chappelle said this. What about when Dave Chappelle said that? Oh, or this, that, and the other thing. It's like, bro, stop letting it consume your life. Like, don't you go get some bitches. <laughs> like, True. Go touch grass. Go do something. Like, and obviously, I don't, I, you know, for the sake of, all right, let me backtrack. For the sake of the joke. All right. When I say go get some bitches, that's not, oh, go talk to some women. Okay. That's just a general term for go outside, go live life because you're focusing too hard on this one specific thing. That's what I mean by go get some bitches. I don't want anybody thinking like that means, oh, you're, you're just some fat guy in a basement somewhere who's got a <laughs> neck beard and never talked to a girl. It probably does apply to you, but I mean, what are you going to do about it? Go get some bitches. Like true. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, bro. Like I'd some of us are, are out here. Yeah. Some of us are out here living life and breathing good air and, and, you know, touching grass and experiencing shit. Other, other people are not. You're, you're complaining about shit that you honestly will have no control over because at the end of the day, when you're said and done, you try to cancel somebody, they're still going to turn around and get a bigger bag than you. So what did you really accomplish? Mm -hmm. So all I know is I'm buying the Rick and Morty game. I don't know what what is it called again? Uh, I think it's called High on Life. High on Life. I'm buying it. Yeah, I'm buy two copies just because people don't want to fuck with it. Uh, I'm me personally, I'm not buying that shit. It. Oh, but... that's okay. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna gift it to you. Don't worry about it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to pay for that one. <laughs> so I'll make sure. Thanks. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll sponsor it just so that way we can have a conversation about it, and you can be like, yeah, but I didn't support it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I it's, was it's, forced to play. Okay. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got you. That's which how I'm sponsored to start money. doing it. Yeah, sponsored money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which by the way, if you guys want to sponsor, make sure to go to patreon.com slash Uh, you know, that's the best way to support the show. So aside from leaving likes, comments, and sharing with your friends. So speaking about support, man, Corey Kenshin is not getting support from YouTube. That was a good transition, I'm not gonna lie. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um What do you think about you that though? Okay. I is it a racist thing or is it just like uh it's oh. favoritism it's 100 percent favoritism okay um i i've watched multiple i mean you've seen the chat i watched uh ludwig's video i've watched uh omni's video i watched the original cory kenshin video i've watched jideon's video i've watched low tier god's video um i've watched multiple people abba and preach i've watched multiple people speak on this situation and I feel like as an unsuccessful content creator, I have the best take on this. Um, and I'll tell you why. Because it's really not a matter of race. It's a matter of favoritism and, and who we really want to put forward. Um, which could be seen as race, right? 100%. But I think by Corey Kenshin saying, oh yeah, they have these moments where Black History Month comes along and all of a sudden YouTube cares about Black people. Um, there's an insensitivity there. Not a racism. Not racist, but there's an insensitivity there. It's like, hey, we want to be included in the conversation about like, oh, okay, let's make a difference, but not actually make a difference. We want to fake the funk. We want people to think like we're down with the cause and like we down for the bitches and hoes, as they would say in Malibu's Most Wanted. But they're really not. They really are just down for inclusivity when it comes to making money. That's it. Corey Kenshin is a great content creator. He's amazing. He's brand safe. But also at the same time, if we don't want to acknowledge like the issues that you're having, we don't have to. We really don't have to. We want to cherry pick and choose the different content creators that we want in front of ads that we want to send to ad to, to advertisers. And Corey Kenshin is not one of those people. You may be in the month of February, sure, but nigga, it's August. It's September. Like, we're not, no. Come come back in November when we're running Christmas ads. Sure. Yeah. And ad rates <laughs> go up. Yeah, sure. We may put Corey Kenshin on, on front page, all this other stuff. But I think it really just comes down to favoritism. Markiplier is a huge content creator who has been on this platform for 10 plus years now. If there's going to be anybody that they're going to acknowledge, it's Markiplier. For sure, because they damn sure are not going to pick PewDiePie. The same thing could happen to, to PewDiePie, and well, first of all, he probably wouldn't get a he probably wouldn't get an age restricted video uh, for the particular content because I saw the clip that he was talking about, which was a self delete clip basically. Okay, uh, and Markiplier put it in his video, 
which didn't get age restricted. So this is just me giving the TLDR for people who are not familiar with this. Thank situation. you for giving the context, by the way. Yeah, sorry about that. So Corey X Kenshin uploaded a video uh, called Mortuary Assistant, right? Where it's basically like, uh, think Outlast. So it takes place in a mental health asylum. And there's a part in the game in one of his videos where a person contemplates and actually does self-delete, right? Yes. Uh, and so the video got age restricted. So Corey Kenshin was like, okay, let me go check other people's and other content creators, both big and small, if anybody else included this part. He came across a creator by the name of Markiplier, who has been, uh, for anybody who doesn't know, he's been, he's been a gaming content creator as well as an entertainment content creator um, who has had his own original shorts and stuff like that, uh, YouTube original shows. So he's a YouTube golden boy, right? Mm -hmm. um, he included the exact same part, no age restriction on his video. So Corey Kenshin then sends an email to his YouTube representative because Corey Kenshin is not a small content creator by any means whatsoever. Uh, and hold on, give me one second. I forgot to. Oh wow, what an intermission! Super, how was your day? Multiple times during the podcast. Oh, and I <laughs> anyway, so he's not a small creator by any means. Millions of subs, millions of people come and watch this guy, and. Also, the only thing that he's guilty of, really, is taking multiple breaks a year for his YouTube channel. So when he comes back, he obviously hits the ground running. Like, within the first month of him coming back from his previous hiatus, he garnished over 14 million views over seven videos. So, which is not easy by any means whatsoever. And then, since him uploading this video, that has since tripled, quadrupled. He's almost over... A hundred million views just in the last month mm. since all of this has happened. So, dude is definitely pulling in bank. Should be a YouTube golden boy for sure. For some reason, he's not. Um, and that's where the racism comes into play. So, when he filed for an appeal with his uh, YouTube rep, and his YouTube rep said, "Hey, okay, I'm gonna go to the policy team. We're gonna see about this this video. We're gonna see about getting your video reinstated." Policy team comes back, they age-restrict his video because he provided an example of saying, hey, Markiplier's got this in his video too. Why isn't his video age-restricted? So then Corey Kenshin goes and he tells his representative, hey, let me talk to the policy team because this doesn't seem right. This seems like a rule, much like how we were talking about Twitch. This seems like a rule that should be across the board and there's some favoritism here. Why did they use Markiplier's video as a way to validate my existence and validate my content? So the rep goes back, has a conversation with the policy team. Policy team then slaps Markiplier with the age restriction and slaps Corey Kenshin with the, with the age restriction both. So clearly that implies that they're 100% favoritism. 100%, guaranteed. Racism, still debatable. Now, the reason why he doubles down on the racism part is specifically because of the instances black creators have been treated unfairly on the YouTube platform. Now, I 100% agree with the multiple circumstances that he has put in this video uh, and the multiple times where black creators have done something and been thrown off the platform or suspended off the platform or had some type of consequence as a result of the content that they have produced either on or off the platform. Uh, and he's right. There could be some slight racism there um, hmm. because Markiplier is a good example of he's not black. He's a huge content creator and he definitely has some pull in the YouTube space. So I don't know. Could I inherently say, could I like straight up say it's racism? Maybe slightly. It could be seen that way, but I think Only 100%. From the policy team, right? Who reviewed his. Yes. His, as his far video. as I can tell, as far as I can tell, because, and then one other thing that he said was who is reviewing these videos? Because when he tried to appeal it the first time, it was denied hundred percent denied straight up. And then when a further conversation was being had, Oh, okay. That validated that that this Corey Kenshi guy is okay. It's it's cool. Now, here's the thing: these are millionaires we're talking about. Millionaires. All of these guys are getting millions and millions of views. Here's the part where I disconnect because I don't fucking care. I don't get millions of views. 
I don't get, I don't go True. viral. I don't even know how to go viral on a regular basis. I do not have the established clout to be able to do anything I want on this fucking platform. Mask off. If part. Corey Kenshin is being treated this way as a content creator with 14 million subscribers, how is it somebody like me with 7,000 could do something? And then the YouTube policy team, the YouTube content creation team or anything at YouTube completely violate me and I don't have a voice at all. Well, that's the real issue I have. Uh, yeah, well, I think the, the thing is for that situation, the one you're speaking about is that unfortunately, even though like a lot of the systems in place aren't, aren't the best, obviously, uh, what I've heard is that if you have a big problem, you're going to need a big signal boost on Twitter, essentially. That's in, in York, in the case you're displaying at the end here, um, I, I, me personally, my, my take on it is I don't think it's necessarily racism because at the end of the day, the policy about self-deletion is, you know what I mean? It's kind of harsh and because of advertising and stuff like that, just how we were talking about earlier with Gideon and that situation, it's always going to be harsh because at the end of the end of the day, uh, it doesn't matter about your video as long as the bottom line of YouTube is met with, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? With money. And you're absolutely correct. You could say it was. It's it's for me that's a hard accusation to levy, especially about people like you don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, I don't think people know this policy team. So it's it's a hard uh, favoritism. You're 100 percent on the money. I agree, undoubtedly. Uh, but at the same time. You know what I mean? With things like that, you always got to be careful. Um, I'm not saying that Corey in, was necessarily not careful, but you know what I mean? It's it's always going to be difficult. You just kind of you kind of have to play it. You know what I mean? The game is established after the ad apocalypse. It's always it's always been established a certain way. Right. So it- okay, I'm sorry. No, no, no. I was going to add on. And even in his video, he even says it's one of three things. Either YouTube is racist, they're, they have uh, favorites and favoritism, or it's a combination of both. So he said it's either one of the three. And, you know, I agree. I agree. I definitely think it's the favoritism part. So yeah, I, I think it's going to be a little hard to prove that it's racist, even with specific examples that really kind of hit heavy. <laughs> with with creators of color so oh no man i don't know but then again if youtube did it have any type of racism he even said in his original video if there really was hardcore racism within that team they would not need a reason to delete him off the platform if they were truly racist it's just yeah nope. it would have been over. go ahead yep would have been it and he would have been filing appeals for three months <laughs> so because you know if the policy team is the same team that's like Oh, this guy violated a rule. He not only violated a rule so bad, we should just kick him off the platform. Like if they really wanted to. Yeah. Because he could raise a stink all he wants to. He could be like, oh, this is unfair. Like file appeal. My channel should be uh, reinstated, blah, 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 blah. There's a policy team that says yes or no. Because you broke a policy. Slightly or really hardcore. They decided they wanted you out of here. Three strikes, you're out. No, they said one, you gone. (laughs) So, you know. I've seen it. They've deleted smaller channels and bigger channels for way completely different lackluster reasons. So I don't know, man. Mm. But once again, this is why I bring it back to these guys are millionaires. Why do I care? Yeah. Also that, that is true. Just get your yeah. money. Like, like Ab has said, uh, from the Abba preach video, just get your money while you can. Anybody who's out there, you know what I mean? Just you either got to, uh, adhere to the rules strictly or just get your money while you got it. Well, yeah, right. I I would prefer if he advocated for smaller creators. I, I I wish more larger content creators when they run into issues like this. I wish they would try and relate that to smaller creators because, like I said, if Corey Kenshin is getting violated by the policy team, what do you think is happening to people that aren't nearly that size? Yeah. So I agree. It's 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 dark depths. Under ten thousand, it's dark. It is, <laughs> it is dark down there for real. Some shit could happen, like. 
and, and it's and it's very apparent because when you're under ten thousand, you can upload some wild shit and never get caught for it. Never, never yeah. get caught for it. Like uh, I even tested uh, uploading a. I uploaded a story the other day on <laughs> on the second oh. channel that was a little inappropriate uh, because I clicked the wrong wrong video on my phone. And oh. I didn't realize until I went to go and watch my short. And um, it was up for hours. Just straight up nudity. Mm. Nothing. Didn't get didn't get taken down. Did nothing. I was like, oh, let me go ahead and delete that. Oh, channels. Channels perfectly fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Channel is perfectly like I said. I I'm not going to promote that. Yeah, 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 some dark stuff happens when you are under 10,000. I'm just saying, you can slide on a bunch of shit. So, yeah. Imagine, imagine the type of foul shit that somebody like the policy team or higher ups at YouTube can really get away with when it comes to abusing creators under a certain amount. God forbid you're under 1,000, you can't even monetize. They can put ads on your video. Like, imagine being under 1,000 subs, right? And you have your first viral video. Like it gets a million views, like at a fluke, no reason. And YouTube's like, yeah, go ahead and put ads on that. They're not, they're never going to hit a thousand subs. They're never going to make any money off of that. So they're making money off of your, you know, let's say you get 14 million views or whatever. And you trying to stack, you trying to stack watch time and trying to get to a thousand. Meanwhile, YouTube's like, hey, it's a couple of pennies, but that shit stacks up. Like, <laughs> give us, give us those ad dollars. You know what I'm saying? And so they just fully monetize, you know, and, and, you know, free opportunity off of that. And let's just say, you know, a couple months down the road, you hit a thousand and you upload something and it's a community guideline strike, right? Slight. Or maybe it's a, yeah, community guideline because that's really what the policy team deals with. And, you know, it might be one person because the policy team is separate of YouTube, by the way. They're a third party entity that is supposed to rule unbiased and and unconnected in any way. Uh, like disconnected completely from the platform. They're not supposed to have any influence over it whatsoever uh, or be influenced by whoever these creators are. And one guy just goes, damn, like I see you got a million views, but then the next video you uploaded is 107. This might be a bot account. Let's go ahead and shut this channel down. Let's go ahead and shut it down. You got 994 subs. You about to hit that thousands threshold. You like, yeah, I got a 14 million view video. I'm about to be eaten. Like, let's go. And your channel gets eaten. Yeah. The channel gets yeeted. You don't have a YouTube representative. You don't have a way to contact YouTube except through Twitter. And obviously, as we've seen, these giant companies really don't give a fuck. Like you can tweet them all day on Twitter if you want to, but if the YouTube uh, social media team doesn't see it, they don't see it. So yeah, and that's that's why you need like other people to like signal boost. That's what I was trying to. I was saying earlier, is that that's kind of the only way if you get into one of these spouts. So. Yeah. yeah, I need Corey Kenshin to to represent some small creators that uh this has probably happened to them, and uh, he needs to advocate for them. That's the only way I can care about his issue right now. Honestly, this platform could be extremely racist, but I'm still uploading to it every single week. So <laughs> stop uploading. Like and for real, if you really think it's racist, stop uploading. It's that simple. Like if you don't agree with the policies and you don't agree with the teams and all this other shit, bro, you got your video not only reinstated, but then you also got another content creator shit taken down. Like rightfully so to where they held up their end of of the tos it's like dog how how much how many w's do you want to get Corey? how many w's do you want to get and then you're still like trying to advocate and go even further like i get it's for a good cause but dog like i don't care i don't care about your big boy problems so, okay that's a little aggressive know. i mean it is what it is he's got 14 million subs he can't hear me uh fair but Damn. i i still think the the premise is like I I mean I don't I don't think you shouldn't care right this maybe you sh maybe you happen. should uh, care because uh, maybe you should care because uh, yeah you might not you might get traded similarly one day and you know what I mean I promise you, you I won't oh well, maybe <laughs> yeah I mean you never know if it does then I'll then that's when I'll hit up Corey Kenshin because he'll probably have three times the amount of subs he does now I'd be like Corey you might you might have been onto something in 2022 man you yeah. might have been onto something but by that time. He'll probably be on hiatus on the platform, and I'll have to hit Jidian up. Jidian, your boy getting treated. I'm getting violated, my boy. Pull up. I need some help. So we'll be yeah. ha we'll be having a completely different conversation there. But if I ever reach that point, which at this rate, 
might not be likely. Uh, then I'll give a shit. Then I'll change my tune. But for right now, I don't give a shit about your big boy problems, Corey. I don't. You're a millionaire. Okay. I. It I, is what it is. I'm not sure I agree with that necessarily. I mean, but here's the thing. We also sat here and had the same conversation about LTG uh, having criticism over Gideon yeah. and, 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 and Kai. Mm -hmm. These niggas are making money. Like, who cares? And even LTG was just like, yeah, you're you're making money, Gideon, like on multiple platforms and you're getting brand deals. Like, why does this matter? Take the W and walk. So it's the same thing. Corey, take the fucking W and walk. It's literally the exact same thing. Okay. I mean, that that's your opinion. I think maybe, uh, maybe you don't care, but I mean, it is isn't. it could be indicative of a bigger problem eventually could be yeah, for sure so i don't it could be a land i don't want to be super dismissive of these ideas just because like oh well you're making a millionaire like you're you're a millionaire what the fuck do you care you're still making millions like i, I guess i i just can't I, I mean i get i understand that you don't have to care right like that's obvious the same the same the same could be said sorry uh the same could be said for the fact that he never once mentioned anything about smaller creators. He doesn't care. He cares okay. that it, that this is currently affecting him. Um, so, but, this doesn't affect me. But smaller creator, <laughs> when you're that big, it's such a broad terminology. Right? Anybody, and it, anybody under a million, under a hundred thousand, under ten thousand, under a thousand, that's, yeah. It's a, I mean, for Smaller him, he's creator. one of the bigger creator on the platform. Yeah. So he just wants the to. Fastest growing too, you so. could say that he wanted to address this so that other people, you know what I mean, have uh, another way to, to figure this out or to navigate. I can't, I can't tell if you don't say it. Oh, I, otherwise, that's me okay. implying. That's me like. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's that me kind of putting a stamp on him, like, oh, he must mean smaller creators too. When it's just like, it, unless because you're such a large monolith of a creator, like you're huge, you're a humongous creator. Unless you say something verbatim, I have to take your words for what it is, right? Okay. So therefore, if you're sitting saying I'm being treated unfairly by by YouTube, okay, you personally or you professionally are being treated unfairly by YouTube. For me to give a shit about your problems, I have to see myself, I have to sympathize with you. I can't. I, I, I simply cannot because you're winning too hard. You're, you literally, just in this one complaint, you won three times in a row. Like, Doug, how, like I said, how, how hard do you want to win? Now, I can only say that because you never said anything about smaller creators. Now, if you did, then obviously I'd be like, yo, I'm going to advocate for this person because he mentioned how this could affect me specifically that's how i'm supposed to care like i just have to i can't it's like if Bill I, I understand Gates your point oh am i supposed to care about that too no i'm not saying you have to care about everything um i think my my pushback is like yeah um they i, I don't want to i guess like like you said not to imply or anything but if this is happening to him this really could happen to you that's what i was trying to get at. yeah yeah true true so I, I get that he didn't directly say, oh, yeah, uh, I just want to help the small creators from this. But it also you also could see it. if you wanted to be charitable with with your with yeah. your interpretation, it also could be like, oh, yeah, this is for other even though if it's not expressly stated, you can kind of, you know what I mean? If they're treating him like this, then, yeah, they might treat you like that. And you should yeah, be helped sure. as well. I, I mean, he didn't expressly state mouth. that. Yeah, yeah okay. I, I, I agree. Or I agree. In his mouth at all, so. But I just want you to be a little charitable. That's it. Slight shit. Me? No, no, no. I don't have 14 million subs. I can't afford to be charitable to anybody or or anything. That's fair. I'll give it to you. So, I'll give yeah, it to you. I, I, can I just see, don't have it. I can see yeah, that yeah. point. <laughs> maybe maybe when I get... When I hit maybe 10, when 000, you can relate, essentially. Yeah, when I, can, when I can relate, it'll be a lot easier for me to to like pass that down and be like damn like like if this happened to like if even if it was a smaller creator making the same thing like they had 32 subscribers or something like that and they said you know uh youtube is treating me a certain way i'd be like oh damn let's be real mm. so you know i'd advocate for them mm. like if super jet told me like jay like 
I'm being treated racist. Like, well, first of all, super, what do you want me to do? Like, <laughs> going to call up Susan? Like, <laughs> hey, you could. Like, I can't do nothing for you, bro. Like, okay. So, hey, but you know, I just think uh, these people problems are are very interesting, and it's it's nice to be able to comment on them. So, I live in a first world where I can potentially maybe one day make a living off of commentating on other people's issues. So, you know, God bless America. Fair. Fair. Yeah. That's 100% fair. Yeah. What do you think, Super Jet? Uh, but you know, per- this whole thing, honestly, my bad, blank. You, no, you're good. You know, nah, y'all have y- y'all have your opinions, but like, yo, it, it doesn't affect me. I, by all means, I kind of agree with that standpoint. Where, not that it, I just feel like this whole thing is going on deaf ears. Like, mm. first thing, no one's good. I'm glad Corey made the issue. I'm glad people are going to notice it. All this other thing, but let's be honest. What, what what's gonna change? Like no, nothing's gonna change. Like I feel like you could be you could be loud. Every black creator, KSI, all these niggas could go show up and be like, "Well, okay, so I, I, I don't know what, what I don't know what Susie what Susan Wabajack's gonna do." But <laughs> did you just say Susan Applejack? I said Wabajack. Oh, um, okay. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, I don't know what. Like, I don't know what she's going to do or what you want her to do. It's not going to be, it's not going to be fixed until a lot of the bigger names on YouTube are going to be different or going to change, which is not going to happen, obviously. So I feel like this is a whole controversy that's just going to die down in like another week. No one's going to bring it up again. Yeah, well, that's just the the internet attention span, unfortunately. Well, like these issues yeah, I can't know, but... last for longer than a week. No, 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 that's true. Don't get me wrong, but I feel like when Corey made the video, I'm like, whoa, that's cool, and I, I probably I agree what he said, but I don't know what's what's gonna happen. No one's gonna like go to YouTube. No, we're not gonna get a whole gang and go to YouTube and protest like Dr. King or something. It's not. It's not gonna happen. We're just gonna. We're just we're just gonna complain yeah, we're on just the internet. Gonna fall into obscurity and just say fuck yeah. it. Yeah, it's like no, no, it's not gonna change. Nothing, nothing's gonna change at all. Oh, uh, well, it's probably me being negative, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, hundred percent. And uh, Jay's power just went out, so that you know yeah. what time it is. Thank you so much for listening. That's all we've got for this episode of the Canon Culture Podcast. Make sure to check everybody out in the description. Uh, shout out to Superjet for coming through to the podcast we love him over here thank you so much for for joining um that's gonna be it for this time but if you want to find us anywhere hit us up on twitter youtube uh spotify for the pod podcast apple google play stitcher all that jazz uh thank you so much make sure to check out the patreon too one more plug so sorry uh and we're out